I think there were about seven seven record companies that came and heard us. And um, they all passed on us. <laughs> yep. They all passed on us. The, the day I auditioned, he, 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 he told me uh, he liked the way I sang and stuff. And he says, you want to come over for supper tonight? He says, let's start writing some songs. So I went over his house. We, started, we wrote that night. The first night we got together, we wrote Long, Long Way From Home. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. That's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, very good. <laughs> and so we would continue to do that every other night. And pretty soon we had about five or six songs. And uh, uh, Bud Prager, our manager, had the penthouse suite in, in some, on top of a 20-story building in Manhattan. So he had all the offices around the outside, and the inside was just an empty space, and that's where we rehearsed. And, and after we worked up those five or six songs, uh, um, we, we started, our, our manager started putting the word out that, that, uh, that, that we are a band and, and uh, we're looking for a record deal. Uh, and, and he sent out the, the rough tapes of, of, our, of our songs. And uh, a little at a time, uh, the, the record labels called, called our manager and came to see us rehearse. They wanted to see what we sounded like live. And uh, I think there were about seven, seven record companies that came and heard us. And um, they all passed on us. <laughs> yep. They all passed on us. And then Atlantic came. Uh, and Jerry Greenberg was the president at that time. And John Kaladna was, was the head of A&R. And uh, so we played them some songs and they had, they had the, the, uh, the, the demo of the songs and, and they thanked us and they left. And, and we, we kind of looked at each other and we go, well, I don't think that's gonna happen either. And then John Kaladner, about 15 minutes later came back and, and he says, I really want to talk to you guys. He says, he says, I think your songs are great. He says, right down the line, every one of them is different from the other. They have a great, a great style, a, a, a great cohesiveness. And, and they've got a unique uniqueness about them that, that is missing from a lot of bands that are out there today. Mm -hmm. he, said, he says, the problem is the demos and the songs you played live for us and probably everybody else averaged about between six and a half and eight and a half minutes. He goes, you could never get that played on the radio. If He says, let's get about four of the songs and trim them down to three minutes and 15, three and a half minutes. So we'll cut out some fat and we'll con condense them into, into a, a very potent powerhouse songs. He says, and then let's have Jerry Greenberg back. And we're like, okay. So, so you know, all, all the big, long overture songs that we were playing, you know, had five or six verses to them, you know. He, he cut it out, and, we, and we, had, we ended up having two or three verses and a guitar solo, and the song was over. You know, nothing, nothing was over three and a half minutes. And that's just what FM and, and hit radio wanted. They didn't want anything over three and a half minutes. They, they would either fade the song out in the middle or they would not play it. And so once we played the, the, the edited versions of the songs, again, for Jerry Greenberg, and he loved, he loved the other songs. He just didn't know what to do with them because they were too long. So, so he had a contract with them that day. Oh, wow. So he pulled out the contract and, and uh, uh, Bud Prager, our manager call, called uh, his attorney and, and we did business that day. We signed a deal. Oh. And within two weeks, two weeks, within two weeks, we were in the studio recording. We, we, Atlantic, Atlantic Records had their own studio on Columbus Circle in New York City. And as we were going in to record at Atlantic Studios, Aretha Franklin was coming out. She had just <laughs> finished her album. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so she left some good vibes. 
I bet, I bet, indeed. And some uh, sprinkled stardust as well on that first album because it became an absolute global sensation, didn't it? It brought, yeah. Yeah. brought you it guys such awesome. attention. And what, what did you feel then? Because obviously you had um, success with, with Black Sheep in terms of the, the two records and touring with Kiss and then you, you mentioned Make the Spooky Tooth and things like that. But this kind of took both of you onto a different level, didn't it? It certainly did. Right from the get-go, it did. Uh, uh, we could feel the impact of, of a real serious label behind us in their promotion department, in their distribution department. Uh, 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 their, 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 their people were knocking on uh, uh, radio station doors and, and, and coming in with, with uh, 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 press photos and this and that and the history of the people in the band. And, and, and then... Uh, he would he would have like a a, a three single EP, yeah, you know, and, and so so the, the first three songs that got recorded were, were mixed and mastered right away and put on the EP, so he could start playing them for radio stations, and there they were. It was feels like the first time, cold as ice, and I think the third one was long long way from home. Three 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 really good songs, and yes. and, and seriously. It, I think 95% of the places that, that they brought the album immediately added, added it to their heavy rotation. And we were on our way. Absolutely. On your way, indeed. And just in terms of the songwriting, then, just to go back to what you were saying about John Kolodna and, and, and trimming the fat and, and keeping it too radio friendly. Is that something that you guys kept in mind for, for later in your career? So when you're writing songs for the next few years, or was that just for that first album? No, no, always. We, we always kept that in mind. We would mention John, you know, and a lot of times he'd come in because he was with Atlantic Records for another three or four more, I think three or four albums more before he left for, for um, uh, Geffen. And and uh, he would pop in from time to time, you know, and we'd play him a song and, and the song's playing and he's listening. And I, I'd see him look at his watch, you know, <laughs> and, and song <laughs> ended. And I'd, it, yeah. I'd look at John, I go, how do we do, John? <laughs> 